Welcome everybody to Brawlhalla at Vessel. Alongside the flying caster himself, Zephyr, I am Stu the announcer. Welcome you all. Happy Saturday, everyone. We know it's just a feeling of fighting in the air today. Something about this weekend just makes you want to nut up and brawl. And Zephyr, we are here to do exactly that in Brawlhalla. So today, we are officially making our way into the bracket stage after we had what was the full round robin group stage just yesterday, where we saw our 88 entrance knocked all the way down, of course, to just two from each of our pools of four. We've already settled out the round one, so we're moving forward into our, I would, what was it, a best of 16 now? Thereabouts, no. uh, something like that. We're just... When I tell you we have a plate of action in front of us, we are just going to be digging right into it, man. It is a smorgasbord of just straight up nucks. And let's talk a little bit about the players that we got. A little gamer coming into this against Manzana. Again, two uh, pretty talented players. We saw a little bit of data from a little gamer finishing 2-0 against Easy Deezy in their round one matchup playing with Orion. So we saw a little bit of success with uh, with the Rocket Lance yesterday from one of eight Watson mains, who was the number one seed in this particular bracket. And it's a, kind of interesting. This level of Brawlhalla, you do get quite a bit out of those ranged heavy hitting weapons, especially something like the Rocket Lance, which lets you sort of clear out that you get to evacuate the dance floor pretty quickly with that thing. Right. And then on top of that, when it comes to a little gamer here, still equally just as skilled as some of the other major entrants receiving notably that buy into this specific pool because they were one to three zero against the rest of their competitors in our initial group stage out here. So while it may not be the most even of setups, we do come from just the recent 2-0 alongside that and now Manzana as well to settle out what will be the start of our round two. Yeah, and uh, again, you want to follow along, exclamation point bracket. I think uh, it should work. Either way, got the start GG. If you want to follow along, keep track. Maybe you know one of your homies playing in this bracket. We've got it going on. You already know. Practically Brawl Hall Essential here this weekend. But, yeah, it's uh, all of this leading up to the preseason. This is sort of the preseason that we've got going on here at Vessel because the spring season is kicking off this Monday. The kickoff stream happening. And, of course, uh, Tuesday, we get into it with all the action with Rocket League, Smash, Valorant, all that good stuff. And, I mean, it's going to be a fun uh, it's going to be a fun spring here in the uh, here in the mountains. Uh, we'll have to see how it comes down and sells in North Carolina as all our gamers coalesce. But we've got round two just ahead here. Little gamer, once again, that Orion ringing clear and true. A Lin Fei, though, Three, in response two, from Manzana. One interesting i don't really maybe this is just me i do not rate lin Fei all that highly just because it's one of those characters maybe gets uh it's one of those characters that has to work twice as hard to get half as much and we might see that but at the very least i kind of wonder how it's going to negotiate the ranged power that orion is offering you're seeing a lot really heavy with the rocket lance and the movement options going to take advantage of that platform try to go up all the way to the top. Lin Fei is going to say no, but is doing a little bit, but drops the combo. Whoa. And is going to drop to the bottom as a result. A grave mistake for the Lin Fei. And that is going to be a little gamer getting a little lead in this game. Potentially a big one here, especially after little to no damage sustained right off of the bat. And once again, the weapon juggling has been absolutely immaculate from a little gamer. This is the second pickup at this time for Manzana. And all of this in total has resulted in almost what is a stock in a half here from a little gamer. Once again, looking for some of those resets. Lin Fei unable to really find most of the SIGs down, finally getting some pressure off of the stage side. While the grab to cancel side doesn't find its way forward, a big dash and the oh. weapon throw. Oh, Beautiful. the ground pound. Oh, it's not the character. It's what you make of it. Like he was shot out of a cannon. Lin Fei using the item throw to their advantage. And now it is two stocks apiece. Still a deficit to make up, but my oh my, that is promising. And it doesn't look like Manzana's done. 
at this point, I'd say put away the daggers, bring out the cannon to play because it has come to pay dividends Ooh. here from the side dashes through and through. And most of this edge guarding, it has been a complete and swift turnaround for Manzana here. Once again, little gamer looking for any kind of solid recovery back, evening out the stock pearls, the health equivalent here. But once again, that side light punishment is just absolutely impeccable is reactable with some of those things and now all of a sudden we have manzana taking the lead and that is the, the thing the rocket lance maybe it catches you off guard if you're not used to it but man oh man can you react to it and that is exactly what manzana was picking up upon, which allowed him to get so much damage off of the cannon and now is going to be manzana trying to maintain this lead here as uh orion with the spear is going to do their best to uh, at the very least mitigate the damage and this is such a struggle. We saw some of those initial combos hitting in the first stock here. This time around for Little Gamer, unable to find the advantage with the spear. Finally, with the swipe above, that's going to be one of the first major launches we've seen in a long moment. But for every tick of damage sustained here, this is a huge success for Manzana, who continues to ramp, given the fact that they've got one whole extra additional stock to work with as we enter the red. I mean... I don't know about the uh, the game plan from a little gamer. It seems to be just looking for the looking for the signatures, just kind of grounded, hoping that the Lin Fei lands in the space, and it will not. No landing at all, and it was a slow start, but a fast finish. Manzana, you got to give it up to him. Wins game one in pretty convincing fashion, given how it started out. Now, remember, for folks at home, this is a best of three, unlike yesterday within our group stage where it was one and done. A little gamer gets a second chance and potentially a third if he can come out with a win in our next matchup. Yeah, and that's uh, we're talking about it. The strength that we saw from Manzana really did seem to be a lot of taking advantage of whiff punishing, which is one of the things mm -hmm. in platform brawlers. It is going to be a primarily defensive game no matter what. It's always going to emphasize movement no matter what. So self-preservation is always going to be what takes the priority. But what is it specifically that you saw from uh, from this Lin Fei? That, because this is not a character that, soup that uh, professionals put highly on the tier list. Looked pretty convincing to me, especially after how reading how a little gamer is telegraphing some of their attacks at the end. Manzana was fully aware of taking advantage of it. I think, I think that word is what I like the most here, telegraphed. And you can tell from the aggression that we saw out of a little gamer coming off of that first stock that that was something that Manzana got a really nice read in here going into the second and third. And as a result, you had a lot of those back end gravity cancel side sweeps that were finding a lot of initial success here. Now, with the dagger start, this is something that I'm curious to see if works out for Manzana. A lot of the light punishment seems to be more equalized. So we'll have to wait. Uh, Want to see if Manzana can get pressure off the stage for potentially that weapon reach set because i know they really like to have that cannon in play manzana now looking to confirm advantage state and a little gamer uh, i mean manzana making the way back i don't really see the uh I, I i think you gotta see a little bit more from little gamer in terms of just quick little pokes because you can do that with the spear it's a spear from crying out loud you know like you don't need to clear out the, the lint bay because the lint bay is not landing anywhere near to you well done and then uh, in terms of mitigating damage off of that hit but at the same time you're oh man you're getting dodged on and they're punishing and now it's going to be a sword you know that the cannon's coming and this is where the big hits start piling up yeah, I was curious to see getting some of that additional range off and switching to the Rocket Lance there, but slowing down the pace of some of these attacks that we saw early with the dodge out and tries to set up for the neutral on the blast there, but doesn't quite get that one off. Once again, solid resets, and you can continually see how Manzana is using these platforms to make these wide sweeping counterclockwise or clockwise rotations and getting behind a little gamer, right? Resetting a lot of the pace, and it will be a missed throw out there, Ooh. but the setup taking advantage of the leap for the weapon to get the smash below absolutely perfect impeccable isn't able to punish out on the spear but i mean this is already an excellent start and now any extra damage that you can see from manzana i mean that's just that's icing on the cake yeah you're seeing the extra credits starting to pile up in the cannon i mean it allows for quite a bit of uh 
of aerial mobility, more so than you might think, all things considered. Mm. Good on the down air. And the Rocket Lance, however, going to put him up into the sky, and this is a little gamer with a fighting chance, but... Oh, man, how much can you possibly do? You're going to try to cheese the stock off of the top. Not quite going to do it and will instead suffer the stock loss instead. That is a full life lead for Manzana. And it, that's what I mean. You're you're stacking a lot of that initial success off of that stock. And with that uh, uh, lead, this is going to be something that feels almost insurmountable for a little gamer to come back with. And granted, while Manzana was able to do it last time around, when it comes to some of these punishes that we have been seeing, it leaves me worrisome. And justifiably so. Gotta say, what we have uh, what we have seen from Manzana so far has been capital C convincing. And just popping him off the stage, not really using the big hits from the cannon until very end. You saw the charge there. And <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, it's looking to be a little brutal right now for a little gamer. Having the spear in hand, you would think like the little chips poking away here and there would be good, but... Ooh. Gotta, at the very least, respect the willingness to fight up close, but I do kind of wonder how uh, well advised that would be, though. Hmm. Well, the switch up to the daggers is going to take it personal Ooh. here to finish the job and send Manzana away and forward to our next round while Little Gamer starts out impeccably with that initial 2 oh, can't quite make it further. You got to give it to him. I mean, a Little Gamer... Again, solid effort, but it was a matter of adaptability, and Manzana had that in spades. You saw it from the very beginning. You know, you go out with the cannon, guns blazing quite literally in this instance, and what else can you do but you know just try to hold on at that point? That's you saw uh, once the whole thing with Orion, and this mm -hmm. is my thing. Like Rocket Lance, very powerful. Spear, very powerful, but it doesn't complement each other. Quite quite uh, as much as you might think. Yes, you could do some sweeping motions with the spear. It covers a lot of range. Yes, you can cover landings very well with the rocket lance, but they can be adapted to. They're not invincible. There is no one win all button in this game. And even though you can do some quite clever things when it comes to uh, things like covering landings or certainly controlling where your opponent might be, you'll see that a, a little bit later with a character that uses a scythe or, or what have you. It's... You can't just do that and expect to win. You have to have a little bit of variety. And maybe that's where the Lin Fei was able to shine against a character that uh, many seem to think is uh, very beginner friendly and also not half bad in terms of viability. Well, it's something that will potentially be answered later here for Manzana. They move forward into our round three where they'll be facing off in another best of three against Bubba Firefox, who just found their own success in our W bracket. I'll go through some of the rest here. Inset Crescent, Pug, Clern, Sherry, Clarency, and one of eight Watson all coming out initially here in our round two to move on forward. Currently, by the way, all straight two O's and, and six hooker as well. <laughs> yeah. And all in the pursuit of top eight. And we're going to have our Sunday bracket filled out expeditiously here today. And uh, yeah, we saw some pretty impressive performances from, uh, from a lot of those players. Manzana, obviously being among them. I do believe that they are the two seed in this bracket. I could be mistaken. I'm sure that I'll get clarification or at least someone yelling in my ear if I am indeed wrong, but one of eight Watson mains is one of the players that we saw. And I mean, one of the more convincing victories from day one. Yeah. And at least for right now, it's looking like it will be a matchup between either cold or matrix for one of eight Watson mains, but coming out extremely fast right out of the gates here with a, an immediate win alongside fate. And then I believe following that up with a Scarlet as well. So a versatile pool, beginning to form there, at least in response to what we have seen thus far, which is, I wouldn't even say unusual, but at least from most of what we have seen, got, got a lot of kind of your your strongest, your best. Exactly. And uh, as we reach the top of the hour, we are going to take a quick break. Don't go away. We've got more Brawlhalla action coming at you right after this. You're watching Vessel.
Hello everybody, my name is Ko, and of course I am the STEM director here at Vessel. Now, guess what I'm doing? Right now, I am helping the previous winner of the last STEM season set up their brand new large gaming PC and their entire gaming PC setup. Now, if you think that is impressive, and what they won is very nice, and you want that for yourself, well, ladies and gentlemen, I am here right now to tell you that the STEM, pre the STEM prizes for this season are out of this world. They are so much better than last time. The grand top prize at States is an eSports lab for your school. Imagine being the one to take that home to your home school. You'll be famous. Everybody will love you, even if they're not in Vessel. eSports lab at your school. Yes, video games at school. I said that. And also, for the ones that are not top top at States, the rest of them all get gaming computers for their entire team. And not only that, but if you look back at regionals, there is a another $10,000 prize pool across all conferences. So, ladies and gentlemen, now more than ever, you really want to get into STEM and bring home the victory. Because these prizes are insane. This might not happen ever again. So, get on board while you can. All right, now that I've hyped that up, I will pass it on to a break, and we'll be back with more Brawlhalla very soon. Thank you. Welcome back to Brawlhalla at Vessel alongside Zephyr. I am Stu, the announcer, and we're getting into round three action. A lot of stuff happened in that last round. We did see a little bit of, uh, we saw a good 2-0 uh, matchup with Manzana going over a little gamer. But going into round three, very, uh, very different stuff happening here, Zephyr. We got a few things at play, such as Shins going up against Ginger Ace, a potential low-key versus uh versus well loki <laughs> <laughs> yeah we see uh ginger ace here in the 2-0 against quulk ends up starting with the loki and doesn't finish with it but has that in their arsenal and then of course on the other side of things it is one of the few two ones that we got the chance to see in our round two with shins versus scraps and while there is this kind of volkov rayman matchup that doesn't go quite shin's way it's the reverse sweep with the loki that might influence this mirror matchup we could potentially see here now in round three 
Yeah, which is a weird call, right? Because it's yeah. one of the some players they like the they like the mirror, others do not. It's a very different kind of. Uh, it really depends on your mentality when it comes to whether or not you like playing that. Because you know how the character works, you know how to play the character, but you don't know how others play the character. It really calls back to your ability to step outside of yourself and see what someone might be doing, what someone else might see in uh, their character and someone who uh can be a little tricky especially especially with that scythe use it could very well come down to uh that because it's going to be all about where you put the loki that isn't you in terms of on the map yeah well it is going to be an interesting one even though we are coming off of an impeccable to one return for shins off of this loki you have to remember ginger ace is currently unbeaten no losses sustained yet even as we once again go into our best of three yeah and rolling along into this match here i am kind of curious because we're going into small brawl haven and uh no platforms nothing just use some guitars and uh your opponent with uh with a few of the same things and yeah just quick little slices and dices could be a lot of nickel and dime damage here but you wind up with enough nickel and dime zephyr you'll find yourself with a dollar eventually uh, we'll see if they can find the payment that should set them above the rest here a bit of switch up with the psych love the grab cancel pull off of the edge there almost a variage punishment but doesn't quite have the damage for the launch just yet Ooh smash below and no recovery available yeah your card has been denied sorry about that one and it is going to be shins with a quick lead to start things off as it is going to be ginger ace with the scythe in hand as well i don't know if there's the damage that can be used to uh, justify its use quite just yet you still have to be able to move mm -hmm. in this matchup just to be able to get in on the scythe right and do that damage with the cut uh, with the cat i mean it's just it's a little crazy. These daggers are, they're really good, good combo potential, and you have the ability to uh, combo pretty well with uh, with Loki, all things considered. That supplements the use of the scythe so well. And as we're seeing now, the use of the, uh, the use of the scythe in the hands of Ginger Ace could very well be the key to victory here as uh, just piling on all that damage. But he's going to need to get oh! back to the stage in order to take this stock. Not able to do it. And, uh, yeah, you get dropped on the stage, but it costs you a stop. This is a huge loss there, and there was some really good responses for setting up that damage, but a lot of this variable play off of the edge here that we've seen has been, well, a bit of a bait in many ways. And finally, while we'll see that damage reset over on the side, once again, we're in one of those situations, a full stock up here, and while weaponry is out on the edge to punish, you're still having to deal with twice as much punishment there oh. has to be super careful we've seen a lot of that play over on the side and with that can come the risk of potentially being dropped off just as quickly i mean you have to have a lot of confidence in your ability to move in the air the ability to connect into that wall even if you're just dodging into it, right it gets you something it gives you a chance to hang on but you got a full stock lead right now you got all the confidence in the world and as long as you can ground your heels you can swing away, but the site again, you think you're back on the stage. No, you're not. And it is going to be the Reaper of Souls, Shins, going to clip him and break out the Salt Shaker. That's just disrespectful. <laughs> Shins, my guy, you're up 1-0. What more do you want? All right. Well, I'll say after what was a huge reverse sweep from shins there he continues on with this momentum against ginger ace to absolutely decimate going into round three and i'll tell you what when it comes to a lot of the play around that edge looking for so much of those punishment opportunities it's not often that we see some of these players take the risk themselves send themselves off at that stage constantly trying to bait it out and it's one of the few things you can actually make worth work with the scythe it's one of the kind of benefits of playing around that weapon in particular so something that obviously shins has shown to have some level of mastery over here now the question for ginger ace is last time around we saw the swap up right he started with loki and then made the move over to taros is this something that is potentially approached again i you would have to think right because if before you think of fighting fire with fire you keep in mind that the fire department generally uses water and that's kind <laughs> oh. of 
that's kind of the thing. I mean, we are apparently going to see Loki. There's just too much pride to give up here, and we're going to an even smaller stage. This is, uh, I do kind of wonder about this. This is, uh, it could be troublesome, but then again, Ginger Race, not uh, backing away from the challenge. You have to, at the very least, respect the gumption of it. Well, it's something that a reset is potentially available to work with. Remember, one of those stocks did fall at the cost of a bit of an accident over on the side, the failure to make one of those recoveries there rather than something of a, a, a direct punishment. So could be a little bit more even starting off right on the bat. It is going to be Ginger Ace taking the full brunt of damage. And once again, one of those risky moves you see from Shin on the other side, trying to look for these ground pounds, trying to see if he can bait some kind of pressure off of the edge here, swapping up to get that scythe weaponry. The stick, though, on its own end, not quite as successful, just barely making it back, but opting to see if he can stick around and look for punishment play. But once again, side Sig, barely the side recovery, and Shin's is back up, but the punishment from the side Sig daggers is just as quick to come out. Just when you think you have the answer, it's Ginger Ace changing the question. You have to respect it. You uh, you present those problems off of the stage. Dictate the recovery. You know, sometimes you're throwing out that projectile not to try to hit him, but to make sure that's where you... Okay, this is where you're not going to jump. And I am going to bottleneck you, more or less, into making a mistake so that I can uh, get you with the Sig, with the daggers, and get that KO, and give myself that early advantage that allows me to do that more nickel and dime mm. damage. And mm. we're seeing all of that. Goodness gracious, show me the money, says Ginger Ace. Now, this time around, you're seeing a difference in the style of play. What was before some of those risky tight edge moves that were made for punishing alongside Shins haven't quite been coming out. I want to see a return to that. We do get a nice taste of it there in that moment, but just as quickly as it comes out, oh, Shins oh. barely dodges past the weapon throw, something that could have ended the series here. Still, though, sitting on almost full red with no option forward here and a three-stock menace ahead. Ginger oh, Ace will take the return. Oh, catch a body, Ginger Ace. You gotta love what you just saw there. I mean, what a response. I was doubting. You know what? This is my chance to eat crow. I thought that it was a mistake to go back to the Loki because it seemed like Shins was uh, getting really the best of uh, the best of Ginger Ace in every way, shape, and form. It really felt like. But goodness me, what we saw, the efficiency off the ledge calculated and still taking those risks but they were calculated they were all in advantage not going off stage unless you really need to and then you're afforded the luxury like you said trying to bait people out off of the stage it's sort of like when uh when a goalkeeper sort of shows one side of the net it makes you want to shoot towards that open corner Ooh. that's what we saw from ginger ace and it is going to be shins that winds up blinking we are breaking out the axe, and can he take the head of Ginger Ace? All right, breaking through with, of course, leave that uh, Volkov on the other side here. This is something that, with a little bit more of direct pressure, a bit of a heavy hit, could provide an advantage to Sins. I just don't know if it has the same kind of edge play potential that uh, gave him his win off of the first stock here. Uh, even still, though, finding a lot of some of that initial damage is... Barely on the own site. This is something we've seen before, but at the cost of most oh. of his health, I don't know if it's the best time to be doing it. Yeah, and that's one of those that you're taking a risk at that point. This is four successive stocks now for Ginger Ace, who's going to break out those daggers yet again. A little bit of that nickel and dime action. But you'd think that it uh, doesn't quite work, right? And I would think that it's uh, maybe not the most meta pick having a. Uh, having an axe with a scythe because you have the uh, lot of range obviously it's a big damage yeah but you're talking about things that can be reacted to you're not really applying pressure you're just applying singular hits that deal damage yes but again you're having to sacrifice a lot of mobility oh. and you're going to get down there and as a result you're holding that axe that only makes you fall faster and it is five straight stocks for ginger ace this is something that you had to understand coming through that this would be what you're dealing with a fully unbeaten ginger ace there is a bit of a myth start with the one stock for shins but ultimately this is one of our highest seeds coming oh, out of buddy. the group stage barely 
barely misses the return on the wall here. But once again, this is one of those situations where we're still two up. You would hope that a bit more damage had been sustained, but at the end of the day, you already found the additional extra stock here, and now you've got plenty of play to work with as we see a constant barrage of these side sigs come out and the follow through there. And now it's Shins who's uh, relegated to having to play a little bit of that ticky tacky style while Ginger Ace can really sharpen those blades and dice through that defense. You're not going to get nearly as much off of the site, and now you're going a little deep. You're going to get mm. down air for it. You're Ooh. able to make it back, though. Oh, my goodness, Shins. Don't do that to me, my guy. Just barely able to touch the wall. Sends the reset factor into play here, giving the recovery an option to happen. But the double ground pound is a scary force. And now with the triple on the red, this is something that Shins has to worry about. It's got to be absolutely, I dare say perfect, but absolutely impeccable. Punches this one back up. It's a return to the stage. And that's the flow through from the site. Unable to get the grab reset neutral. And the charge up doesn't quite land as well. But even still, he continues to try to bait the edge. Working through this, Ginger Ace has been absolutely schmoovin'. And this battle in the Carolinas still going. And it is heating up. I mean, not a foregone conclusion. Shins is making something happen. You gotta, at the very least, respect the... Uh, the hood's fun to do it, but it's just too much ground to have to make up. The Volkov comes alive a little too late. And as we are trying to crown a champion, keep in mind, even Kings will fall to an ace. Yeah, this is something for Ginger Ace to potentially reflect on now going into these future rounds as our competition continues to heighten here. It wasn't the perfect 2-0, but it was still, but yet that, a challenge. A big, once again, we've got to give some credit to Shins where it is due. Coming off the back end of a reverse sweep into some leading action. Wasn't ever quite able to get a handle back on that, but we saw a lot of signs of life, especially even there in the end, what was at the last moment, a one to one for those stocks the closest it had been since his win i mean you just have to respect the effort that uh that shins put in at the very end it really did look like it was just kind of like we were gone ginger race was cruising in the next round he's thinking about what he's going to eat before the bracket starts tomorrow but then here comes shins you know it's uh, again not really a comeback character the way that you really think about it you're relying again on really dominating things from the start with damage with the axe being able to gain a positional advantage as well as a, a good deal of uh as well as a good chunk of damage with the scythe but still brick by brick starting to build it but just ran out of room at the end well, I'll tell you what, when it comes to our round three, it has almost come to a close. The majority of our matches finishing up, and I'm more than happy to read out. One of eight, Watson has already found another dominant 2-0 here against Matrix in our first of many lobbies. And Sleepy Jojo keeps that competition just as good alongside him as a 2-0 against Currency. Both of them will move on into our quarterfinals where they will face off both currently with perfect records for ginger ace it's a fantastic return and six hooker will be the one to find them against in the quarterfinals as well for the rest of our lobbies they're not quite finished but you will be seeing both clern and pug join us here tomorrow as we'll have to still settle out who moves forward from menzea versus bubble firefox and bean versus nick's horn there is only one who can sit up top mount brawlhalla and it's going to be one of these eight absolute carolinian carolinian clashers that uh, we have seen here it's uh it's been a wild one today i love what we're seeing sleepy jojo and watson mains is going to be an absolute barn burner of a quarterfinal match certainly ginger race looking to send a message against uh against six hooker who was thus far undefeated in the bracket so ginger mm -hmm. race knowing that they can overcome adversity certainly something to hang their hat on we are going to send it one more time over to Christian to tell us a little bit more about STEM. Christian, over to you. Well, thank you so much. I can hear myself talk. All right, so I'm here back with both new information and old information. Well, so let's start with the old information, and I'll save that new information for two seconds in the future. So, to reiterate, in case I ever have to, which I really don't, but STEM winners, total top prize. Esports lab for your school. I mean, it is incredible. You should really be thanking me. In fact, go on the Discord and be like, yo, Co, at Co, 
thank you so much for this opportunity to win such a fantastic esports lab at my home school for winning first place in states. Of course, everybody else in states who are top winners get whole gaming computers for the entire team. And then there's also a $10,000 prize pool for regionals across all different conferences. Now, some new information I need to disclose to you, ladies and gentlemen. We opened up a PC giveaway for if you could convince your STEM coach to let you have it. One per conference. We have already chosen who has won. And no, your STEM coaches are not going to tell you who it is, but I will Monday night on the kickoff stream. Yes, you heard it. If you entered in this giveaway, this PC giveaway, you need to be watching Monday night, as I will tell you if you had won or not. Well, with that being said, don't go too far, because tomorrow we are watching more Brawlhalla.